ಪ್ರಕೃತಿರ್ಗುಣ ಸಮೂಢ ಸಜ್ಜಂತೆ ಗುಣ ಕರ್ಮಸೂತಾನ ಕೃತ್ ಸಂವಿಧೋ ಮಂದಾನ್ ಕೃತ್ ಸ್ನಿನ್ನ ವಿಚಾಲೇತ್ ಬಿವಿಲ್ಡರ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ದ ಮೋಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ನೇಚರ್ ದ ಇಗ್ನರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಫುಲ್ಲಿ ಎಂಗೇಜ್ ದಮ್ ಸೆಲ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ಆಕ್ಟಿವಿಟೀಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ ಅಟ್ಯಾಚ್ಡ್ ಬಟ್ ದ ವೈಸ್ ಶುಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಅನ್ಸೆಟಲ್ ದೆಮ್ although these duties are inferior due to the performer's lack of knowledge okay so important word <clears throat> bewildered thank you for not sharing not sharing oh sorry <clears throat> yeah sorry bewildered by the modes of material nature so um samuda muda so be fooled bewildered so which means that basically they are in illusion about their real identity and so they are in the grips of modes of material nature hmm and uh, yeah so they engage themselves in material activities who the ignorant because they are not aware of their real identity they are ignorant and they think that they are the body and so they engage fully in material activities and they engage to such an extent that they become attached <clears throat> all this is because they are bewildered Hmm. So if I, I have to give the dictionary meaning of bewildered, perplexed, confused, hmm. baffled, puzzled. So basically, they are, you know, material nature has them in her grips. Hmm. so they will engage in all kind of material activities and become attached but the wise should not unsettle them unsettle them means like okay you don't do this this is not correct what you are doing your work stop this work no even if they are doing some wrong work illegal unethical etc why should not unsettle them although these duties are inferior due to the performer's lack of knowledge so because they don't have knowledge about what is right karma what is wrong karma etc they are engaged in some inferior activities hmm? because they are bewildered by the modes of nature so when we are preaching basically this is again verse for preaching when we are preaching we don't immediately just tell people saying that stop your work hmm? um for per- persons who are unknowledgeable unknowledgeable falsely identify with gross material consciousness and are full of material designations full of material designations me mine i i'm indian i'm this i'm that full of material designations body is a gift of the material nature and no and one who is too much attached to the bodily consciousness is called manda or a lazy person um, a lazy person without understanding of spirit soul ಗಿಫ್ಟ್ making it the reason for our further entanglement is the manda tell hmm. headed person ignorant men think of the body as self they accept bodily connections with others as kinsmanship the land in which the body is obtained is their object of worship hmm. and they consider the formalities of rituals themselves to be ends in themselves um what is this uh uh, uh ಫೇಮಸ್ ವರ್ಸ್ ಕುಣಪೇತ್ರಿ ತಾತು ಕೇ ಸ್ವತಿ ಕಲತ್ರಯ ಬಹುಮ 
ನಿಜ್ಜತಿ ಯತ್ತೀರ್ಥ ಬುದ್ಧಿ ಚಲನೆಯನ್ನು ಕರೆಸಿತ್ ಜನೇಶು ಅವಗ್ನೇಶು ಸೈವ ಗೋಕರ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಸೇಜ್ ದಿಸ್ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಆರ್ ನೋ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ತೆಲ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಬಿಗಿನಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಲೆವೆನ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ನಾಟ್ ಕನ್ ಕನ್ಫ್ಯೂಸ್ ಎನಿವೇ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ವರ್ಡ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ um this actually is the um, bodily consciousness what is bodily consciousness thinking of the body as self accepting bodily connections as kinsmanship land in which bodies obtained is worshipable mm, formalities of rituals to be ends in themselves this is all bodily consciousness social work nationalism and altruism are some of the activities for such materially designated persons mm, so they are two materially designated proper is also saying they do social work also Uh, under the spell of such designations they are always busy in the material field for them spiritual realization is a myth and so they are not interested it's a myth we also people say according to mythology hmm? so they think it's some imagination those who are enlightened in spiritual life however should not try to agitate such materially engrossed persons better to prosecute one's own spiritual activities silently such bewildered persons may be engaged in st- um, such primary moral principles of life as non violence and similarly materially benevolent work now prabhupada is saying this is okay social work and nationalism altruism all this is okay hmm. um because they are ignorant they are engaged in those activities hmm. because slowly anyway they'll um in the in devotional spirit in devotional spirit we should engage them in all kinds of activities of bhakti without actually asking them to change their occupation etc engage them in bhakti and slowly when once they get engaged in bhakti then they hear and gradually they'll come to a stage to say oh okay looks like what i'm doing is useless so they will come to that conclusion themselves we don't have to push them to or you know like blatantly say that um uh, just some oh yes yes you are so busy i understand you know can you please help with this there is this function we are doing this can you drop me here can you please pick up these things whatever it is just engage them some more in bhakti men who are ignorant cannot appreciate activities in krishna consciousness therefore lord krishna advises not to disturb them and simply waste valuable time so which means that we don't tell them to necessarily like seriously chant even if they tell they don't really appreciate it so but they will they will be willing to engage in some practical physical activities right like getting some stuff from market etc etc hmm? but the devotees of the lord are more kind than the lord because they understand the purpose of the lord consequently they under, undertake all kinds of risks even to the point of approaching ignorant men to try to engage them in acts of krishna consciousness which are absolutely necessary hmm? so uh, things that they will easily uh, kind of you know accept uh, some people might be willing to do some charity or uh, you know um, willing to Uh, whatever kind of service they they can do without necessarily pushing them to be doing too much of chanting and reading and all that if that's not what they're inclined to do and we somehow just engage them in some activities of bhakti <coughs> though they don't appreciate it we will still engage them and when they come for program etc we'll anyway make them chant uh, with everybody else and things like that and slowly they might develop some kind of inclination but the whole point is that the work that they are doing etc or how they are materially attached that we should not unsettle them in the sense <clears throat> that your profession is wrong what you are doing is not right etc that they will have to realize in course of time they will realize when they hear the pure message uh, so it doesn't mean that we dilute the message it just means that we will not be pin i mean like one on one we will not tell somebody saying that hey, what you are doing is wrong but in class we will see like that hmm? so that then he that person should reflect saying oh okay what am i doing is this right wrong etc and that willingness to hear also will come slowly when they start engaging with devotees you know maybe like they like prasadam we call them for prasadam hmm, like that you know 
gradually. Okay. Three point three zero. My Sarvani Karmani. Yes, sir. Yeah. So I have a question. So in the previous verse, when it is written, right, that we should not unsettle uh, them who are engaged uh, in, in the activities of uh, philanthropy and all this. So how do we understand in relation to the preaching activity? So is it like, so sometimes there might be an argument that uh, should preaching should not be done with high intensity that, okay, there should be uh, chanting of holy names and these things, or it should be just like, it might be uh, confusing for the preacher that to what extent he or she should uh, propagate Krishna consciousness to such people. So what is our understanding there? Uh, no, so see, basically the point is that um, um, we don't dilute on the preaching message, like I said, but we don't go and unsettle some person saying, no, 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 don't do this. I think you're wasting your life. You know, this is unsettling business. But to simply say in class, okay, uh, you know, we are not the body, we are spirit soul. So we should somehow engage in Krishna consciousness. So if we are interested in doing charity, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita that the best form of charity is given to a person in Krishna consciousness or who is propagating Krishna consciousness. They go, oh, oh, is that what he, Krishna is saying? Okay, I'm interested in doing charity. Okay, so then they'll think about it. So we are not necessarily telling them their, that their altruism is wrong. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, the message is communicated, but you don't go and at a one-on-one -on -one level, go and unsettle them by saying, you are doing something wrong. You know, this is all uh, just pricks their false ego. So we will preach such that the message gets conveyed. So okay. there is no question of uh, and diluting the message. Hmm? <clears throat> yeah. Yes, sir. Three point three zero. Mai Sarvani Karmani Sanyasya Tyatma Chetasa Mira Shir Nirma Mo Bhutva Yasva Vigata Vikata Churaha. Therefore, O Arjuna, surrendering all your works unto me with full knowledge of me, without desires for profit, with no claims of proprietorship and free from lethargy fight. Okay, so this is the conclusion of Karma Yoga. For those who want to who have the propensity to work. This is how they have to work. So surrendering all your works unto me, full knowledge of me, without desires for profit, with no claims of proprietorship, free from lethargy, do your duty. Okay. So you might want to make note of this. Uh, purport. This verse clearly indicates the purpose of the Bhagavad Gita. The Lord instructs that one has to become fully Krishna conscious to discharge duties as if in military discipline. Hmm. So one has to discharge duties as if in military discipline, which means that we have to be extremely disciplined uh, and simply follow. Military means they don't have scope. They don't have option to say, okay, I will follow this. I will not follow this. No, everything has to be followed. Right. So we should have military discipline. Now, if we don't have military discipline, our progress in Krishna consciousness will be very slow. Okay. Such an injection may make things a little difficult. Prabhupada is saying it may make things a little difficult, not very difficult. It may make things a little difficult. Nevertheless, duties must be carried out with dependence on Krishna because that is a constitutional position of the living entity. Uh, so Prabhupada is saying being dependent on Krishna is the constitutional position. So, okay, if you have some duties, uh, we still execute it with military discipline, which means that we don't we don't desire for profit. We don't claim for proprietorship. We are free from lethargy. We do. Um, the living entity cannot be happy independent of the cooperation of the Supreme Lord because the eternal constitutional position of the living entity is to become subordinate to the desires of the Lord. Hmm. Arjuna was therefore ordered by Sri Krishna to fight as if the Lord were his military commander. But the Lord was not his military commander. That's the point. 
right? But we have to become subordinate to the desires of the Lord. One has to sacrifice everything for the goodwill of the Supreme Lord and at the same time discharge prescribed duties without claiming proprietorship. Again, this whole business of discharging prescribed duties is in Varnashrama. Uh, for us, we are not even uh, not even doing prescribed duties practically. So at least we should not claim proprietorship. And we should use surrender our works to Krishna. So which means that we should use the results in Krishna in Krishna's service. Arjuna did not have to consider the order of the Lord. He had only to execute his order. The Supreme Lord is the source of all soul, soul of all souls. Therefore, one who depends solely and wholly on the Supreme Soul without personal consideration, or in other words, one who is fully Krishna conscious is called Adhyatma Chetas. This is very important. Without personal consideration. We should not have any personal consideration. We should do it only solely and wholly. We have to depend on the Lord and do whatever is pleasing to Him. Nirashi means that one has to act on the order of the Master but should not expect fruitive results. The cashier may count millions of dollars for his employer but he does not claim a cent for himself. Similarly, one has to realize that nothing in the world belongs to any individual person <coughs> but the, everything belongs to the Supreme Lord. That is the real purpose of my mm, or unto me. This is nice. One has to act on the order of the master, but should not expect fruitive results. And nothing belongs to me. Everything belongs to Supreme Lord. Then he says, surrendering all your works into me basically means that everything belongs to him. And when one acts in such Krishna consciousness, certainly he does not claim proprietorship because everything belongs to him. Then how can I be the proprietor? This consciousness is called Nirmama. Adhyatma Chetasa, Nirashi, Nirmama. And if there is any reluctance to execute such a certain order, which is without consideration of so-called kinsmen in the body of relationship, that reluctance should be thrown off. In this way, one may become Vigatta Jvara or without feverish mentality or lethargy. Everything according to his quality and passion has a particular, every one according to his quality and passion has a particular type of work to discharge and all such duties may be discharged in Krishna consciousness as described above. That will lead one to the path of liberation. So two things Prabhupada is saying, actually Krishna is saying here that one should do prescribed duty and without lethargy hmm? and surrendering everything unto me with full knowledge of Krishna. With full knowledge of Krishna that he is the Supreme Lord, I am his servant, uh, I do my duty, prescribed duty, without lethargy, without desires for profit, without claims of proprietorship, and surrender all the works unto him, knowing that everything belongs to him. Uh, actually, if we are in this, this um, frame of mind, then even if we are actually engaged in so-called non- prescribed duties, it is still okay because there is no karma phala from that. Hmm. So this is important to come to this consciousness hmm. to completely is a lot of important points here. Military discipline, number one. Number two, uh, depend on Krishna. Hmm. Depend on Krishna. Be uh, become subordinate to the desires of the Lord. Hmm. Hmm. Sacrifice everything for the goodwill of the Lord. Yeah. So these these are the important points, yeah, and without lethargy, which means that uh, and there shouldn't be any reluctance to execute uh, bhakti uh, using results in Krishna consciousness. Uh, people might say, no, no, why this? Why you are spending so? Why you are giving so much money there, etc. 
now all such reluctance has to be should be thrown off if you think you are comfortable doing something don't bother about what relatives parents etc say just do whatever is required be free from this feverish mentality or lethargy Adhyatma Chetasa means full consciousness of the self by consciousness. Full knowledge of the self by consciousness. Nirasi without desire for profit. Nirmama without ownership. <clears throat> Vigata Jvara is without lethargy. Okay. Anybody has any questions? how do we depend on krishna since then any of you none of you have any questions i i'm asking what is this dependence on krishna mean hari krishna am i audible yes prabhu yes yes prabhu and when i asked any question nobody had a question i had any question when i when i am asking a question nobody has an answer what is dependence on krishna mean when it comes to duty accepting the uh, results as they come like accepting the success or failure in the same way now we may put our efforts but if the results don't come then mm. okay okay anybody else So, are all of us are we dependent in uh, on krishna or are we independent of krishna when when we are working it's not complete 100% dependence but there is dependence and there is not dependence also okay what about others others have anything to say Uh, as a, as a common man i think sorry go ahead yeah yeah so that's true go ahead no as, as a uh, common man i think more people think there is no dependence it's everything is is their own doing uh, but i mean of course being conscious it's a different uh, proposition but uh, a common man outside still thinks he is completely in control and he is doing everything okay Okay, Gaurav Prabhu, you are saying something. Yeah, I was thinking a dependence like how uh, a child is completely dependent mm. on uh, the parents. Mm. Doesn't know next day is going to get a meal or not. But <laughs> he doesn't care from where the meal is going to come or where whatever. Mm. This depends on the parents. So. i think that dependence we have not come to that stage at least i have not come to that stage but that is the dependence on lord we should have okay okay anybody else okay so so this uh, okay what gaurav prabhu is saying uh, is dependence when like i mean there's one kind of dependence which is when there is a problem um yeah i mean naturally we should depend on krishna um 
which means that uh, situation is kind of gone you know we are under water so to speak so we are under water and um, we know that it's beyond us so we depend on krishna okay this is this is okay this is easy understandable as in we we do because we don't we know that there's no other option anyway as in uh, we have to depend on the lord right uh, uh, and it's not like we depend on somebody else or some other human being or so that is okay we have come to that stage where we depend on krishna when there is some problem now the con- question of consciousness comes when um things seem to be in control like you know you're given a task at work and you are taking it up now the any of you remember this you know krishna book last chapters one of the last chapters uh, this thing about narration about how a brahmana comes to the you know to the palace uh and uh, you know he says that his children are being as soon as they're born they're dying and then says okay is there is there a solution can somebody help everybody's idle everybody's being quiet you know only krishna is there balaram pratyumna samba etc nobody says anything but arjuna uh says oh uh, i will protect and then this uh, ramana says okay if you are sure then it's fine then same situation next you know is, um, ramana's wife becomes pregnant she's about to deliver then arjuna comes and you know it build, builds a kind of protection with arrows etc but then as soon as the child takes birth it vanishes and also his bow arrow everything um in that uh, in krishna book propat says that arjuna before going to this because in arjuna's mind this is, uh, is okay as in this is what this is normal uh okay so situation has come i'm going to for that particular work but he doesn't depend on krishna of course this is for us for to teach us uh propa says he depends on shiva he doesn't depend on krishna so that means that he offers prayers to shiva and then he dips so like this even when there is a this is normal work right normal day to day work we should depend on krishna our consciousness should not be i am doing it or i can do it yeah the other day i asked saying that how many of us think that we can we go back to krishna in this life some devotees said that yes they think because they can put the effort yeah we should definitely put the effort but we should not think that our effort is uh, krishna is obliged to respond mm, so we should not think okay i have the ability so i will do it no even if it looks within capability within your normal bounds of what you can achieve what you can do what you cannot do uh, one should not think um uh, you know but it from false prestige false proud pride saying that okay i can do it this is important this is dependence even when it is within our that we can do we should still feel like simple thing like you know um, bhakti siddhant sarasvati thakur whenever somebody used to call him saying that for can, you know there's a class arranged can you please come swami ji like he used to say yes comma krishna billing what is it i mean going uh, from one place to another place maybe 10 minutes away half an hour away it's a normal activity but the dependence is uh, you know building this consciousness saying okay whatever if something has to happen if krishna willing it will happen even if it is within 
if it is anywhere above my capability then anyway i will depend on krishna but even if it is within my capability i should say depends on krishna willing so like this our consciousness should be in every act in everything that we are doing we depend on krishna we depend on krishna not that we ask for something depend on krishna means doesn't mean that we ask saying krishna give me this give me that no it's just okay i mean i am not independent i am depending on krishna if krishna wants it will happen so we should use the intelligence that krishna has given but with the full awareness that i am not independent that i depend on his supreme will so this is very important because in everything that we do we should build this consciousness saying that krishna desires because i am dependent on krishna well everybody is dependent on krishna not everybody recognizes it but as trying to become devotees of krishna we should at least recognize this and this is full knowledge of krishna so when you have full knowledge of krishna saying that i am not independent you know that is important so small or big or in in all perspectives we should in all situations we should depend on krishna is that okay is uh, important practical um, aspect because otherwise this trinadapi will never come we will never come to the platform of humility because we always have this in the back of our mind saying that i will do it i can do it no can we become humble no can we become krishna servant how can we come into the, in that mood of servitude Uh, if servant thinks that he is powerful enough that he doesn't need a master then what kind of a servant is he mm, so this is very important dependence on krishna because when we depend on krishna then no claim for proprietorship no le- no lethargy also because i am working for krishna i will work full fully charged up mm. so everything happens actually if we work in that mood no desires for profit because krishna willing whatever comes comes i will accept hmm? so this is very important to practice this in day to day normal dealings not even difficult normal dealings is that okay Okay. We will conclude. Here two verses. Three point two nine three zero. Okay. Okay. Nobody has anything else to say. Okay then. Hare Krishna.